uh, he influences. The lives that he affects, he doesn't care. He's only concerned about his own self-preservation. Back in the Vietnam conflict, as our Congress called it, it was a war, but they would never admit that. Um, and as a war, we stuck our nose in, we shouldn't have to start with. But back in the Vietnam conflict, there was a lieutenant, and he was out on patrol with his men, and they got backed up in, uh, uh, by the Viet Cong, and the bullets were flying everywhere, and a shell came in and blew one of his legs off, one of the lieutenant's legs off. And he knew it was going to be certain death if he and his, uh, his patrol stayed where they were. So he took that stump of a leg, he jammed it down in the mud to try to control the bleeding. He had the men leave their extra weapons within hand's reach and as much ammo as they could spare. And then he showed his men how to get out and they all left. And when they went back in there later, of course, uh, the lieutenant was dead. In front of him was all these empty clips and these empty shells. And way out there was a bunch of dead Viet Cong that he had kept from getting uh, to his men. Well, up on that hill with him that day was a young man named, uh, his name was uh, Britton. I uh, can't think of his first name. Uh, but uh, he came down off that hill and God saved him and became a missionary to South America and won a lot of people to the Lord because on that day on that hill there was a man who knew his responsibility and knew you shouldn't flee when you're facing the enemy because other people are going to get affected by it. Amen. Yeah. So he stood his ground so the other people could get away. And God used the other people who got away. Somebody in the news people asked uh, Jim MacArthur one time, they said, General, who's the, who do you consider to be uh, the greatest general? And, and no hesitation uh, on his part at all. He said, General Walker is the greatest general I've ever known. And a lot of those guys had never heard of General Walker. And so they started questioning the, this, this man Walker said, why do you say that he's the greatest general that you know? And he said, because I saw him in retreat and he didn't have a mob, he had an army. There is a time to retreat. But you do it in an orderly fashion just so you can get yourself another position to fight the enemy. That's the yes, only sir. reason for retreat. It's not running and going AWOL and that kind of stuff. It's just getting a better fighting position against the enemy. And it's an orderly thing. It's Amen. not, hey, I'm headed for the woods, man. This is over for me. It should yeah. only be the attitude of a Christian. Amen. Refuse to flee. Why? Because no man lives to himself. And you're going to affect other people if you throw them down. When I've seen families torn up because the dad quits or the mom quits or something like that, and just, there's other people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Refuse to flee. Let me say, secondly, when you feel like getting away from the all, rebuild the foundations. Go back to Psalm 11 again. Psalm 11. Rebuild the foundations. In Psalm 11, verse 3, which is the motto of my ministry, you'll find all my stuff out there, says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Uh, look back at uh, Ezra, right back before Nehemiah. Ezra chapter 3. When Zerubbabel, the, uh, the uh, governor, uh, went back, and rebuilt the foundations of the temple. We read some particular things about that in chapter 3. He says in verse, uh, verse 8, Ezra 3, verse 8, Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God in Jerusalem, in the second month began Jerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, uh, Josedek, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all of they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. So he says when they were come out of the captivity, first thing they started doing is rebuilding uh, the foundation. And one thing that will encourage you to rebuild a foundation is when you get sick and tired of the captivity you're in. Yeah. Yeah. You get fed up with the problems. You'll start doing something about it. And that's what they're doing here. They're going to rebuild the foundations uh, because, uh, because they're, just, they're sick of the situation. They're tired of the situation that the enemy has created for them. Look here in verse, uh, verse uh, 10. Uh, verse 9. Verse 9. Then stood Joshua with his, with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, and the sons of Judah together set forward the workmen in the 
the house of God, the sons of Hinnabad, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. So when you get sick and tired of your captivity, uh, then you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to get busy rebuilding the situation that has been torn down by the enemy. You don't need to be like uh, Ahab. You're talking about a two-year-old. Yeah, yeah. When he couldn't get his way, you know what he was talking about the king. Yeah. Couldn't get his way, man. He goes lazy and the man turns his face to the wall, pounce. Yeah, man. You don't do that. You rebuild the situation that got torn up by the enemy. Uh, it comes to mind a uh, a man used to be in my church years ago. His wife, his daughter was what you would call a latchkey kid. Uh, and mom and dad were going to work and she got up every morning, got herself ready to school but went to school, got back there again they still weren't there and all that stuff and I was talking to him about that one day and she was a teenager, I said hey man you know, she's a teenager she needs her mom and dad she needs somebody looking out for her life and his response was well years ago we turned her over to God and now she's his responsibility may I say that God will never take the responsibility that he's given you Amen. And if you don't do it, it's going to be a mess. Yes. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as that girl got 18, she left home, went out in the world, and honestly, I don't know if she ever got back in church. Amen, Amen. Amen. You ought to reveal some things when, when the devil starts tearing them up in your lives. And make a mess of things. Amen. Now look at verse 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, then they set the priest in their apparel, uh, with trumpets and the Levites and sons of Asaph with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, uh, king of Israel. Uh, let me just say this in passing. Uh, music will, can give you courage to keep on keeping on. Yes, sir. If it's that kind of music. Yes. It can stir you up. I'll tell you what, when I get feeling bad or, or run down or something in my office, I've got, I've got amazing grace with bagpipes on my computer. And boy, that gets me fired up every time. I don't care how bad I feel or whatever. I just stop, push away from my desk, punch the button, start playing that, lean back in my chair, close my eyes. And it doesn't take long to get even through the first stanza. And we're already in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. The problem's gone. Amen. Music will help you if it's the right kind of music. Yes, sir. Uh, the Bible shows that very clearly. Uh, when Saul was demon-possessed, David came over and played music, and the devil left Saul. Yeah. You want to run the devil out of church? Play some good music. Yes. Yeah. You want to run him out of your house? Play some good music. Yes. Keep him out of your car. Watch what radio station you've got. Amen. 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 Yeah. Old Jehoshaphat knew that. You read over there uh, where he was going to battle against the Syrians. And he did what uh, military people would think was a dumb thing. He put the singers out in front of the army. And the Bible says when they started marching toward the enemy, as they began to sing praises unto God, that God confounded the enemy. And God moved against the enemy and gave them a victory. That's the way the Britons used to do. Yeah. When warfare was, you know, within arm's length instead of a thousand miles away like it is today, <coughs> missiles and stuff. And they would put their bagpipers out in front of the soldiers and play those things. And say, well, how stupid, man. Those will be the first guy shot. Hey, they were an undefeated military power for 200 years. Yeah. They controlled the world in the 15 and 1600s. Yes, sir. And that's the way they fought their battles with music. I'm telling you, to help you. Yeah. Look at verse 11. And they sang together in, by chorus and praising and giving thanks. Of the Lord, why? Because He is good, for His mercy endureth ever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They rebuilt, <coughs> they got the job done, and they shouted the victory when it was all said and done, and they praised God. Uh, so you don't quit when the foundations get destroyed, you rebuild them. Say, preacher, how's that? Uh, what does that got to do with me? Hey, if your home's been destroyed, rebuild it. Yes, sir. Yeah. If your testimony is shot, rebuild it. If your kids are going astray, rebuild those foundations. If your life's a mess, rebuild it. And sometimes it might take years. But when the foundation is finally relayed, you can shout the victory to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for it. Amen. You can look back and say, oh, all that trouble went through is nothing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, while we're in it, it looks like the end of the world. But yeah. when it's, when, uh, back in, in basic, when I was in basic training back in 19, 
uh, 60 uh, back there a while back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, man, they're killing us. They're killing us out here. And then that drill instructor had the, had the nerve to tell us. He said, hey, last week we brought the Boy Scouts through here, through this, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what is it? Obstacle course, thank you. See how far back it was? <laughs> he said, we brought the Boy Scouts out here. They ran the obstacle course in eight minutes. What's wrong with you guys? Well, after I got through it and went back, it was a picnic. It really was. <laughs> One of all what we thought it was, what it was going on. So if the foundations are destroyed, you just need to get the work rebuilt. <coughs> Refuse to flee, rebuild the foundation. And number three, remember your father who's in heaven. Amen. Look at verse 4 of Psalm 11. Verse 4. Remember your father who is in heaven, whether you are in contact with him or he's in contact with you or not. He says in verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. 